From the previous video, we have our two cubes. It's the exact same geometry. We only rendered the cube geometry twice, and we used different transformation matrices for each of these cubes. That's kind of nice, because then we don't have to duplicate our cube data down to the graphics hardware. Instead, we just say, here's the cube, and render it once here, and render it once there. The way we did that is by having a different transformation matrix per draw. We set up a translation, a rotation, combined it all into a full transform, sent that down as a uniform, and then called draw. Repeat the process, different translation, different rotation, combined it all again into the full transform, sent that down as a uniform, and then called draw. OpenGL actually has native support for instance rendering. And by native support, I mean we only have to call draw once, and then OpenGL can render both of our geometries in parallel. That is, if some of your graphics hardware is done rendering one cube, it can move on to the next cube while the first cube is finishing up rendering. That's kind of nice. We want to harness the graphics hardware as much as possible. However, it's a little less convenient to do instance rendering with OpenGL because we have to work with buffers and get our data down into buffers. Let me show you how instance rendering works with the graphics hardware. I think it's going to be easier to show you how rendering works by using our flat triangles that we did several videos ago. I just want to set up one red triangle on the screen. We did this when we were looking at color buffers. And I want to instance this one red triangle. And then after we understand instancing with this one red triangle, we shall come back and instance our cube data just as we did before. But here's our red triangle. I want to draw this red triangle in a few locations on our screen. I'm going to instance our red triangle like so. I'm not going to do it perfectly consecutive as we did with the color buffer videos. We'll have a few red triangles just sitting out here nice and instanced. So the first thing I need to do is get our scene changed so that we have one red triangle instead of our cubes. I'm going to come back to our code and I'm going to change it. Don't blink. When we come back I'll show you what I changed. Okay, there we go. I have our triangle. I set up some simple vertices. There's one here, one here, and one here. In fact, you can see the data behind the screen. I said negative one, zero. So negative one, zero would put this vertex right here. Negative one, one. Negative one, one would put this vertex right there. And then negative point nine, zero right here. There's our single red triangle. And I, I want, want to instance it. I change the rest of this around a little bit. We only have two floats per vertex. Two floats per vertex. Attribute zero will be our position. As we've seen before, I've changed our GLSL code as well. Uh, new vertical tab group. The GLSL, we've seen GLSL this simple. Here comes the position. It's a VEC2. Attribute zero. Just slap that position to the screen. GL position is a VEC4. So take the first two attributes from the x, y of the position coming in like so. This is kind of interesting syntax I haven't shown you before, but VEC4, OpenGL, GLSL is smart enough to say VEC4, GLSL is smart enough to see, oh, you want the x and y as the first two components for your VEC4. The third component will be a 0. The last component will be a 1 because our homogeneous coordinate we want to be a 1. I know I haven't talked about this in much detail. I have several videos on homogeneous coordinates in the Game Engine Programming playlist if you want to learn the details for now where we'll just ignore the homogeneous coordinate and just know you have to put it to 1. But that's kind of con some convenient syntax is saying, hey, from position, use the X, Y, and then here's the Z and here's the W. Color, I just hard-coded to red. I could just put this directly in the fragment shader, but I didn't want to involve too many code files in this example. Anyway, this gives us our nice red triangle. I also changed indices here. Pretty bland, 0, 1, 2, since we only have three vertices, or yeah, vertices. So I actually could go back to drawing arrays, but I want to keep with the indices thing because we know about indices, we know about elements. I want to use that when we do our instance rendering with our cubes. Anyway, my goal with this example is to take this red triangle and draw it in other locations of the screen. I want to offset the red triangle to different locations, not necessarily uniform-like locations as we did in previous videos. I just want to move this triangle across the screen in the X in some rather arbitrary 
locations. So what I have to do is take each vertex and add an offset, add an offset, add an offset, and then draw the triangle again, draw the triangle again, draw the triangle again. I could use do this with uniform values, or I can store this instance data in a buffer, just like vertex data, and tell OpenGL to deal with that itself. So let me show you how to do that. I'm going to come in here and say in layout and location one. I'm going to have a single float, and that will be my offset. And then here in the GLSL code, I'll say position.x plus offset. Let me actually bring this in so you can see it. Position.x plus offset. And then I want position.y and then 0 and 1. So I'm going to offset the x by this offset so that I can make that red triangle move across the screen. Let's save the file. Let's send some offset data down. I think we'll do it right here. I'll say GL float array offset. Oh, wait, I'm coding like a C sharp programmer. Offsets array gets. And the first one will do zero. We'll draw our original triangle. And then the next one will bump it in by 0.5. And the next one will bring it all the way to the center of the screen with one. And the next one will be at 1.2, and last one will do 1.6. I'm just kind of making these up randomly. We need a buffer to send this data down so that we can vary the data just like we did before. GLUint offset buffer offsets, offset buffer ID, just as we did before. GL gen buffers. I need one buffer. Please store the quote-unquote name or ID in the offsets buffer. Offsets buffer ID. And then we need to bind that buffer to our array binding buffer point. We've talked about binding buffer points or binding buffer targets before. GL bind buffer. GL array buffer. We want the offsets buffer ID. Let's send our data down to OpenGL. GL buffer data. The buffer that's bound to the array buffer binding point. It's going to be this many bytes since it's an array. It's not a pointer. It's an array that the compiler can tell the size of. Uh, it's going to be offsets is the address of the data. Then the usage, as we've seen before, we'll examine this argument in greater detail in later videos when we talk about buffers, but essentially we're not going to change the data, so static, we're going to use the data to read from it to draw, we're not going to write from it, so optimize away OpenGL. GL, enable vertex a trib, not apple, array, okay, we want to enable attribute 1 because offsets here is attribute one so let's enable that attribute and then gl a trib vertex a trib vertex a trib pointer We've seen this in previous videos as well for attribute one there's one float please don't touch my data don't let's, let's just uh, that's kind of frustrating to have that argument there, but it does have a reason. We'll see that in future videos. The stride, well, all this data is tightly packed, so the stride is actually, we can just say zero since it's tightly packed, and then zero bytes into my buffer because the offsets start here at location zero into my buffer. I don't have to offset or stride over anything since I have two buffers. This is our first time we've had two buffers for the varying data. Now I'm going to hit control of five. What do you think is going to happen? Pause the video and think about it. I'm going to hit control of five. What will render to the screen? Control of five and we have a single triangle. We do not have instance triangles and the single triangle looks nothing like the triangle we had originally. The triangle we had originally was here on the edge and it drew like this, I believe. And now we have this type of triangle. Right, let's examine what happened here. If I, I think we can close the shader code, bring this back up to the screen. 
and what we did was draw a single triangle. I didn't change any of the draw calls down here in paint. I just said, yeah, go ahead, draw our one triangle. I'm actually embarrassed. I still have all this cube data, even though we're not using it in our shaders anymore. I'm going to get rid of all that and rid of all that. Oh, man, all this code I should have got rid of when I paused the video. There we go. All right, clear, viewport, draw elements, and all we got was this single triangle. Let me tell you what happened. This data here varied per shader call. In fact, I am going to have to bring up our vertex shader code again and do new vertical tab group. Just as we've seen before, this data here varied per vertex. This vertex shader runs once per vertex, and every time the vertex shader runs, it passes in this varying data. So on one vertex run, this position got sent in as our position. And on another vertex run, this got sent in as our position. And on an another vertex run, that third vertex got sent in as our vertex position. Well, the same thing happened down here. In fact, it might help if I color code it. Let me do thinner, though. On one vertex run, we sent in this data, this first position for our vertex position. And at the same time, this value came in for our offset. And on another vertex run, the second position came in as our vertex position. And this value, this 0.5, came in as our offset. And then on, a, on the third one, we'll go with green here, this position came in as our position. And this one came in as our offset. And those three vertices made up our GL positions, which was one triangle here. So if we look, we started at negative 1, 0, which would be right here, negative 1, 0. We added 0 to the offset, so this vertex is still in its original location. But the blue vertex, we said, will be at negative 1, 1. So negative 1 would be all the way to the left here. Positive 1 would be all the way up. And then we added 0.5. And you can't see the entire screen here. A lot of it is off to the right here. But essentially 0.5 is this far in. So negative 1 plus 0.5, put that vertex right there. And then for the green vertex, was at negative 9, 0. Negative 9, 0 is roughly about here. But then we added 1, so now this vertex is a little bit off to the right of the center of the screen. And so we got our one triangle. This is not instanced rendering not instance rendering supported by OpenGL. We want OpenGL to do instance rendering, so we have to change up our code example a little bit. There's a couple things we need to do. Let me close this. First of all, I'm going to come down here and say GL vertex attrib divisor. For attribute one, for attribute one, I want the divisor to be a one. Just ignore this divisor for now. I'll talk about it in a second. But essentially what I'm saying is we want to do instance rendering. And then down here in my draw, I'm going to say draw elements instance. And then right here as the last argument, I need to say how many instances I want. And we have one, two, three, four, five instances. Notice when we draw, drew the single triangle, we only used up the three vertex attributes here. We wasted these. But now I'm going to say we have five instances. So I'll put a five there. I'll control a five on this. Build this and run this. And you see now we have our instance data. We did this with one draw call. OpenGL dealt with the instancing for us. And that was kind of nice. And all I had to do to get OpenGL to do that instance rendering for us is I had to say draw elements instance. I had to add how many instances we have. And I had to do this vertex attrib divisor. Let me talk about this vertex attrib divisor and then I'll end this video. Sorry this video is so long. You must desperately want to know how instancing works with OpenGL. And I would split it into two videos, but I don't know if it's really worth doing so. Let's talk about this vertex attrib divisor. This divisor is simply the rate at which we're going to consume this data. Let me show how that works. We did five instances. Okay, instance zero, that is too thick. Let's go thinner. We did instance zero, instance one, instance two, three, and four. That is five instances. Then the divisor is simply a divisor. We divided by one, divided by one, divided by one, divided by one, divided by one. Well, anything divided by one is just itself. So zero, one, two, three, four. 
And OpenGL Smart, it says, well, I'm going to draw five instances, and I will consume this data at the rate of the divisor. So on the first instance, I'm going to use the zeroth float here. And on the first instance, I'm going to use the oneth float. And on the second instance, I'm going to use the second float. So generally, we just put a one as the divisor because every instance, we want to consume a value from our instance data array. Notice this data is still varying. If I go back to our shader, and look at our shader here, vertex shader code. I don't know why I keep closing this. Maybe I... I don't know why I keep closing it, but this is still varying data. It just doesn't vary per vertex anymore. It varies per instance. The position still varies per vertex. This data up here, it varies per vertex, but this data now varies per instance. What happens if I come in and say, let's do a divisor of two? Okay, let's, let's draw our instance numbers again. We had instance zero, one, two, three, and four. And then I'm now I'm going to draw, divide by 2, so divide by 2, divide by 2, divide by 2, divide by 2, divide by 2. This is integer arithmetic, so 0 divided by 2, 0, 1 divided by 2, 0, 2 divided by 2, 1, 3 divided by 2, 1, 4 divided by 2 is 2. So on instance 0, we shall use the 0th item in our array. For instance 1, we'll still use the 0th item in our array. For instance, 2, we use the oneth item in our array. For instance, 3, we'll also use the oneth item in our array. And for instance, 4, we'll use the tooth item in our array right there. So then we're not actually going to use these values. And what will happen is we'll end up drawing some triangles twice. We'll draw the first triangle twice, the second triangle twice, the third triangle once. Let's control of 5 this and just show you the end result you'll see we won't have five triangles we'll have three triangles but what we really have are five triangles it just so happens that this triangle and this triangle was rendered twice on top of each other so there you go there's vertex to trip divisor why you would set this to anything but one i'm not sure but now opengl is doing the instance rendering for us it wasn't that hard we just had to set up our quote unquote varying data that varied per instance we had to do the vertex of trip divisor saying for vertex attribute one attribute one attribute one <laughs> We want to use this divisor as one, meaning this will vary per instance, one instance there, one instance there, one instance there, one instance there. Oh, by the way, please draw instance for us. There are five instances.